Hello everybody, Malta here, and uh, today is uh, March 28th, 2024, and for the past several weeks I have been advertising like an upcoming trip to Japan, but I didn't reveal what the exact date is, and uh, well, uh, since people are probably still wondering about that, uh, it's uh, right now, today. I'm pretty much all packed here, I'm just bringing my laptop case and my, my gaming laptop of course, along with... Uh, you know, this uh, carry on this. Uh, well, check this. Is my this will be my check bag on the flights. I will have, uh, you know, just clothes and toiletries and crap in there. And that's pretty much that should be pretty much all I need. Actually, I don't really think I'll need much for this trip besides my switch and my game, my music player as well. But yeah, otherwise, I really don't think I'll need that much else. It is uh, currently 430 in the morning and uh, my mileage is currently at 227,474. Just thought I'd randomly add that in for this vlog. Uh, but uh, anyways folks, it is time to go. This is my apartment and I am currently leaving now. So, I haven't really been specific about like the flight details and stuff and like how I'm gonna get there and some other things. So I thought I'd uh, talk about that on the way there. Of course, I'm not gonna be vlogging the entire uh, trip to get there. I mean, at least not to the airport, but uh, I just wanted to kind of go into a couple things here, like share some more details now that it is the day. The plan is my my first flight takes off at 10 a.m. I'm traveling to the Chicago O'Hare Airport, basically. Um, it's a two and a half hour drive, so I'll get I should get there around 7 a.m. basically, which is perfect. You're supposed to show up two hours before your flight, your scheduled flight time. Um, but I'm giving myself an extra hour uh, because for one thing, well, in case I need to stop for gas, because I got I still got three quarters of a tank, but like you know you never know. I, I'm sure that'll be enough gas to get me to, to the airport. But also, I'm a little concerned about like issues I might run into there. Most notably, parking. Uh, I'm gonna have to pay to park my car somewhere, and it's gonna be there for ten day or nine to ten days or something like that. I can't remember if I'm arriving. I can't remember if I'm coming back Friday or Saturday. I'm gonna have to look, uh, take a look at the itinerary just to be sure. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be coming back on Saturday. So, I mean, I'll put 10 days just to be safe if I don't check by then, but I really should because I might be wasting a day if that's the case. Yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah, so there's that. Well, just the fact that Chicago Airport is so huge, it's so massive. It's one of the largest airports in the States. And uh, so I'm really worried about making find my way around there, basically. All I know is that I do know that my flight is at uh, Terminal 2, or where I'm taking off from. And I'm going to be flying with uh, Air Canada today. Well, also, well, basically for this entire trip because I'm also flying with Air Canada on the way back. So taking off, so I need to go up to Terminal Two at the Chicago Airport. And uh, I apologize for all the and does. I keep on doing that all the time. I need to, to break that habit somehow. By the way, it is uh, about 30 degrees here. It's really cold. And uh, apparently, well, there I go again, another and uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, blah. Um, it's supposed to be actually pretty warm in Tokyo, like in, or in Japan in general. Like in uh, Fahrenheit, it's going to be in the 70s, like mid-70s possibly, or at least 60s. It's going to be pretty warm, so I'm going to have to, like, I'm not going to be wearing my... I debate on like taking my winter coat because like I'm wearing it just because it's so cold here where I live, but it's gonna be warm there, so I'm not gonna need my coat at all once I get there. So I'm wondering, you know, how can I wear my winter coat to the airport but like not have it in Japan? Well, I can't really do that. It's not possible. I could, I could just leave it in the trunk of my car or something, but it's still I don't know how warm it's gonna be in the airport itself. So that's the I'm gonna be there for at least two or three hours. But uh, now getting onto the interstate, heading on I-41 South. From Mina, Wisconsin, all the way down to Chicago. So this will be quite a fun ride. Okay, so yeah, going back into details. So uh, I mean, my first flight is an hour and a half, and it's going to be to uh, Toronto. So, you know, since I'm flying with Air Canada, that means we're going to have a layover in Canada. And this time it's in yeah, this time it's going to be in Toronto. So, I don't know what Toronto airport's like, but I know that my flight, my next flight to that is a Terminal 1. So, and my layover in Toronto is going to be an hour and a half. So, there's an hour and a half flight to Toronto and then an hour and a half uh, layover there. Um, so, I'll be at 
Toronto from, uh, I guess, 12.30 in the afternoon until about 2 p.m. or so. And so 2 p.m. Eastern time is when my next flight takes off. And that one is, uh, that's from Toronto to Tokyo. And that is a 14-hour flight. And uh, that one I'm actually quite nervous about. I have never been on a, on a plane flight longer than maybe four or five hours or so. So I don't know how I'm gonna handle a flight of that length. And I don't know, this is just so crazy. Like this is my first time traveling internationally. I, ten, I technically did leave US soil in, uh, 10 years ago for the uh, for a spring band trip. We went to Victoria, BC, which is in Canada. So technically I did leave the country then but that hardly counts because apparently Victoria is the most American city in Canada, as people tell, people have always told me, so that hardly counted. But this is real big. This is like the other side of the world, basically. This is like, for me, personally, it's like traveling to another another world, basically. It's gonna be a lot different than here. So yeah, I'm, uh, so I'm taking off from Chicago Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and speaking, you know, transferring to Japanese time, it's going to be, or Tokyo time, or whatever it's called, uh, it's going to be around 5, uh, 4 45 p.m. or so, like 4 or 5, so around there. It's going to be 5 o'clock in the afternoon Friday when I arrive. Uh, it's like, it's 20, almost 24 hours of traveling, basically, because you got the 14-hour flight plus, uh, an hour and a half in Toronto, so it's 15 and a half hours, and plus the hour and a half from Chicago to Toronto. So that's uh, 17 hours, and plus the two and a half hours for me to get to uh, Chicago from my apartment. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. So yeah, I'm going to be in Japan from March 29th, 5 p.m.-ish, to Friday. Huh. I'm pretty sure my flight takes off Friday night, like late in the afternoon. But I'm going to arrive like Saturday morning in the U.S. because I'm going backwards in time. So, you know, because Japan is, uh, is 14 hours ahead of me. At, ahead of central time at least uh, in terms of time zone differences so I'm going to lose 14 hours in addition to flying for 14 hours so uh, it's, it's very complicated, so complicated you know, time zone differences but basically I'm going to gain time coming back but there's, it's, still a lot, it's still a lot of time traveling but I'm going to gain time when I come back um, and that will be April 5th or 6th. April 6th, I'm pretty sure, was when I, come, when I arrived back on U.S. soil. Now, for the, fir for the weekend, basically, so Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, I'm going to be in Tokyo. I reserved a hotel there, and it's near Wedo Station, basically, because I'm going to be using the, the Shinkansen to get around, to get around Japan. I'm only going to be visiting two cities, though. So I'm going to be in Tokyo for the first weekend, and then... Uh, Monday, April 1st, I'm going to travel out to Kyoto. And I'm going to be in Kyoto Monday through Friday, basically. And Friday, I'm going to head back up to the... All the way back up to the airport, basically. To come back here. And uh, I got the JP Real Pass, so I can take the Shinkansen, basically, whenever I want during, these, during this entire trip. So that will be extremely helpful. It costs a lot of money, of course, but I guess maybe it's maybe somehow it costs less than it would have if I had just bought the tickets individually. But there's so much I'm, I'm looking forward to. But with that said, there's got there's some issues we have to go into, and that is, you know, there's been a lot of uh, conveniently around the time of me visiting, there happens to be a lot of issues going around Japan with uh, tourists. Tourists being like just be all around terrible people basically like being disrespectful um unruly you know just completely complete degenerates basically well i don't know about you know that word because we usually use that for eh, specific types of people but i mean some of these people really are degenerates let me tell you but there's just so many people who are just so disrespectful to like this is literally the equivalent of going to your next door neighbor's house basically what would you do if you do that would you actually be 
you know, like, running around, like, vandalizing shit and harassing people, especially the, you know, especially the women, like, them too. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that or not, so I might have to cut that out, but you know what I mean. So, it's just, it's so, it's so, I don't know, it's so, it's so disheartening hearing about all this shit. And I know it's, it might be, uh, I know at the very least I'll be a lot more respectful to these people than the tourists are, but at the same time I can't help but feel still kind of hypocritical because I'm traveling there myself as a tourist, so, but I can definitely tell you I'm going to be a lot more respectful of the rules there, and in light of that, as well as my current understanding of, you know, so my understanding of Japanese culture up to this point, combined with the recent events, has uh, caused me to make a decision. When I'm in Japan, I will be vlogging, but all the vlogs I'm going to be making in Japan are going to be silent vlogs. That means, you know, going by my personal definition of this, of this is that I'm going to be not speaking directly to the camera ever during the vlogs. You might still hear my voice, but that will be like if I'm talking to a friend, like I'm recording something, uh, that I, something really cool I see. And I have and I have a friend with me, which I do, because uh, I all go into that as well, because uh, I do have friends we're gonna be seeing there. Uh, but yeah, I'm, all my vlogs are gonna be sound. I don't want to. I just I just really don't feel comfortable going there and being like all these other vloggers, YouTubers, being like, "Hey, look at this! Oh my God, it's so cool! It's all anime!" Uh, I just have no interest in contributing to that bullshit. So. Yeah, in the spirit of Japanese culture itself and the recent events, I'm going to uh, just do silent vlogs and be more respectful and courteous to those around me. Um, am I still going to capture capture stuff? Yes, I am. But I'm going to be silent and as as respectful about it as I can be. You know, uh, of course, with me, I have a tendency to take video a lot more than pictures. But, you know, in, in addition to being silent vlogs, I'm also going to do my very best I possibly can to not record people without their consent. Um, in a big city like Tokyo, and, and Kyoto's also kind of fairly big itself, um, it's very difficult to do that without recording people. And not only that, but also and they're kind of overrun with tourists these days because it just so happens that this week that I'm traveling there is cherry blossom season. So all the cherry trees are blossoming and they just look as gorgeous as ever. And of course, that means it's going to be, like, way too many tourists there, like, so many people there, that it's going to be impossible to get a good view of any of the trees there, probably. So I don't even know if I'm going to bother trying to do that. Uh, close to where I'll be staying is uh, is uh, one of the public parks in Tokyo called uh, Window Park. And there's, I guarantee, I think there's, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of cherry trees there you can look at. And I don't know how big this park is, but I can guarantee, like, it's gonna, it's probably going to be overrun by tourists, especially on the weekend, too. Like, And not only that, but I didn't even realize this was Easter weekend when I put in for my time off from work. I did this, like, several weeks ago, and I had no idea that it was Easter week. Can you believe that? That's how out of touch with holidays I am these days. Like, because I've worked in retail for the past eight years, or eight and a half years, actually, I am so out of touch with holidays. Except for the big ones like Christmas, like I know, like I know when those are, but like I still don't care about them because I don't celebrate them because I live by myself. Like, yeah. But yeah, while I'm there, I do have uh, three friends specifically that I do plan on visiting, uh, and these are friends that I met through VR chat over the past couple years. So I am traveling to Japan as a tourist per se, but if I'm being honest here, I don't think I would have visited there uh, Japan if I didn't have friends to see there. Because, uh, although for the most part I am actually kind of introverted, uh, I still want to make friends, you know, I want to have connection, I want to make connections with people, because everyone kind of needs that at some point in their life, and for me, that's been a lot of people outside of my country, you know, like foreigners, basically, and specifically in China, like a lot of my friends are in China, basically, so that's why I wanted to visit China so badly back in October, not only that, but relationship with someone there but you know how that went yeah I really uh, I really wanted to visit China back in October and it just didn't work out but this time now with Japan it's finally working out so I can actually I can actually go there and I'm heading there now 
well, head towards the Chicago airport, but I will be headed there later today. So yeah, I'm gonna be meeting one friend the day that I arrive in Tokyo. We're gonna be uh, meeting up for food, basically. That's the plan. Other than that, I don't know where we're gonna meet, and I guess we're gonna be making specific plans. Like the thing is, once I get to once I arrive in Japan, my first order of business is immediately is to get to the hotel. I need to check into the hotel. That way I have a place to stay and put all my stuff. And then I can start going out and exploring Tokyo. The thing is, with all this, with this being cherry blossom season and being so many tourists around, I don't think it's going to be uh, reasonable or possible or whatever for me to visit like a lot of famous places, honestly. Like the Tokyo Sky, uh, Sky Tree, the Tokyo Tower. Uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, that's just off the top of my head. Well, there's also Akihabara. And Akihabara is actually a place I do plan on going to. I don't know how busy it's going to be. I hope it's not too bad. But I have a feeling it's going to be really crowded. So I don't know how much fun I'll be able to get out of that visit. But it's going to be this weekend, no matter what day it is. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to be by myself. That's the one day I'm by myself, essentially, because I don't have any friends planning their visits. Maybe that might change by then, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be alone Saturday uh, exploring Tokyo. And I might just do that. I might just I might just walk around Tokyo that day on Saturday and just explore, just look around, basically. Um, so since it is going to be extremely busy this weekend, my thought, or my, this week, my thought was why plan to go to any famous places anyways? Like, because a lot of them you need to reserve ahead of time, like months, sometimes months in advance to visit. Like, for example, the Studio Ghibli Museum. But there's also a place you can just walk up to and go to. And those are probably the less less popular places, per se. I don't know. Like, the less known places. Like, what I want to do is just kind of explore. You know, just kind of get a feel for Japan. And someday, maybe even later this year, who knows, maybe next year, I don't know. I will come back to Japan. This is not going to be my only visit. It's just the first of what I hope to be many visits throughout my lifetime. But this is just the first visit, and I just want to look around and see stuff, you know, like see what stuff I, I could come back and visit later for future visits, like, in, for example, Studio, Studio Ghibli Museum. Because now I know I have to schedule my visits there months in advance, so I can, I know that for next time. So, that's just basically my plan. Now, uh... On April 1st, when I head to Kyoto, I have another friend I'm going to be visiting in Kyoto, and they're going to be taking me to one of the most uh, famous places in Japan. It's the it's a famous sh it's a famous shrine that Kyoto is known for, and I completely forgot the name because I'm not good at remembering Japanese names yet. Because well, even though I've been studying Japanese and Chinese for the past couple of years, especially Chinese, um, I just haven't put enough focus on Japanese. So I my knowledge of language is extremely low. I just know the basics and how to pronounce it correctly, but, like, I just don't know many words or phrases yet, and that's the, gonna be the hard part for visiting friends. But, all three of the friends I'm visiting, they know how to speak English, so that's the good news. You know, I highly recommend that. You really should make friends with people in the culture you're gonna be visiting before you go there. I highly recommend that. Because, uh, it's just, you know, why would you go there just to see the country but not meet anyone there. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right to, you know, if you want to get to know a culture, why not talk to people from that culture, you know? That's just that's just my, my thought process there. You know, and I like making friends again, so that's just how things happen. I just played VR chat, I met people there, and three of them happen to be from Japan, and they're really good friends, so I'm very much looking forward to meeting them. So, anyways, I think I think that's all I have to say, because like if I don't, whatever I don't say now, I'm not going to get to say during the trip, but it, well, I guess I could, I could commentate over uh, the vlogs after I get back home, you know, just kind of put a commentary track over them so that way you can, I can't explain them without having to, without talking over people in Japan. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, but anyways, we're up to 20 minutes here. I need to reserve as much camera space as possible and my phone's battery, so I will uh, see y'all later.
prier de vous servir en français, anglais et japonais. En guise de remerciement, nous offrons nos membres européens l'accès au service de messagerie électronique sans frais à bord commandé par Bell. Pour commencer, connectez-vous au réseau RT Wi-Fi et rendez-vous à l'adresse aircanadawifi.com. Si vous n'êtes pas membre, inscrivez-vous à Aéroplan dès aujourd'hui à aircanadawifi.com pour profiter d'avantages exclusifs. Vous pouvez acheter un accès complet à Internet avec votre carte de crédit ou pour faire Aéroplan. En revanche, aucun achat de Wi-Fi n'est requis pour suivre l'état de votre vol sur aircanadawifi.com ou sur notre application mobile. Vous notez que les applications vocales ne sont pas permises. Vous pouvez redresser le dos de votre siège, ranger votre tablette et attacher votre ceinture. Les couloirs et les sorties de secours doivent être dégagés de tout bagage. Les appareils électroniques de grand format comme les ordinateurs portatifs doivent être rangés de façon sécuritaire. Les appareils électroniques portatifs devraient être régulés.